Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orisund once again, and we're going to go back to Copenhagen in Denmark, one of my favourite places in the world, also one of the best beer cities in the world these days in my opinion, and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some awesome beers from these guys over the years, lots of different styles, but the one that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I know they do very well, and it's also another member of a series that we've been reviewing a few of in recent times and I've been very impressed with this series as well actually. So very much looking forward to this one, hopefully it's another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, like I said we are going to go to Copenhagen, we're going to go to the south of the city once again to Kastrup and we're having a look at yet another beer from the wonderful Amar Brewkhus. So this is another member of their American Outlaws series which is basically, you know, big bottles, uh, barrel aged, high alcohol, which is always a good thing. And uh, yeah, this particular beer is the Hoodoo Brown. They're describing it as a bourbon barrel aged, all grain, double mash imperial stout. It comes in at 16.8% ABV, so it is a little bit of a monster. So um, yeah, really cool to be able to review this beer on the channel for you as well. The last two beers that I reviewed from this series, the first one was the Cherokee Bill, which was a really interesting one, uh, they said that that was a Doppelbock, although I thought it was more like a very strong Maybock or a Hellerbock. And then the one after that was the Black Bar, which was a lovely um, big quadrupel. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed that one as well. That was review number 2900. So yeah, this one was a little bit of a surprise actually. My friend Matthias, who I shared the, the other two beers with, he decided that he was going to buy a bottle of this one when he was in Sistenbolag and he said, you need to review this. So um, yeah, after I finish filming this one, I will be sharing it with him, of course. So Matthias, big thank you to you for making this review possible that is really cool he knows that this is one of my favorite breweries of course so yeah really looking forward to this one as i said and hopefully you guys enjoy my take on it as well a 16.8 percent bourbon barrel aged double mash imperial stout this is going to be an absolute monster of course the cult classic imperial stout from amar brucus is the herr Fredriksen, and they do have um is it the double black mash it's called so yeah they do have history with these um, with these double mashed beers. They're actually quite impressive, so try them if you get the chance. I would recommend you have a go at some of the Amar Brucus beers if you do come across them. But yeah, let's see how we get on with this review then. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amar Brucus before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the danish beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to very regularly of course because i live very close to denmark and i love my danish beers and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Amar Brewkus once again so Amar Brewkus as I've mentioned to you already are based in Kastrup in the south of Copenhagen on Scaland in Denmark and these guys are probably one of the best known Danish craft breweries outside of the likes of Mikeler and Toul but this brewery was established back in April of 2007 by two friends Morten Valentin Lundsbach and Jakob Storm both of whom were childhood or school friends and uh, avid home brewers as well. But apparently in school, the pair were forced to do a chemistry and physics project together, and so they wrote about the fermentation process in beers. And it was from that point on that they were just hooked on the idea of becoming brewers. So later on, both went on to gain their brewing diplomas from the Scandinavian Brewing School in 2008, and then the company has since gone on to become very highly decorated. So the first brewery that they had was located in Tornbu in the southern part of the city, and they've been constantly expanding over the last few years. They had to buy a whole new brew kit in 2011 which took their capacity up to around 250,000 litres per year but they managed to get the whole the overall capacity of this brewery up to around 400,000 litres uh, per year in that first facility that they had. They just kept expanding the, uh, the fermentation capacity of course but they moved to a new site closer to the airport in 2018 which doubled their capacity up to around 800,000 litres per year and I think they've got even more room in there to expand further so it'll be interesting to see 
what uh, happens with this new facility that they have as well. I still need to go and have a look at that at some point as well. I'd love to get Amar Brookers on the channel for a Meet the Brewery segment. So we'll see about making that happen once the whole COVID-19 thing has well and truly buggered off. Um, but a little bit later as well, they opened up their tap house bar in Copenhagen next to Nuraport Station. That opened in March of 2019. And then a few months later, they opened another bar in Amar, their home kind of district, if you like, of Copenhagen called Bregan. And that had been a, a quite respected bar actually for quite a wee while before they, they took it over. So they went and turned that into another tap room actually, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So I need to go and check that one out. I have been to the one at Nuraport Station, but I would like to go and check out the Bruggen Bar in Amar at some stage. But um, as I say, these guys have gone on to become very highly decorated. They're very good for their West Coast IPAs, the New England IPAs, and they're also well respected when it comes to the Imperial Stouts and things as well. But you get lots of very good beers from these guys. And as of May 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 285 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about the brewery. Uh, for this one, other than the fact that they're one of my favourite Danish breweries, I always have a look for a couple of beers from these guys when I go over to Copenhagen. So if you do get the chance to try some of the beers, I highly recommend that you do. If you're buying them outside of Denmark, they might be a little bit pricey, of course, but that's the kind of uh, that's the thing with Scandinavian beer. It's very good, but when it exports, the price is a little bit high because of how strong the currencies and uh, things are. Uh, here in Scandinavia so yeah be aware of that but you know they are they are worth the white they are worth the price uh, definitely in my opinion so yeah always enjoy reviewing some beers from Amar Brukus of course the prices in Denmark are actually quite fair I would say so um yeah have a go at some of these beers if you get the chance but that is it for your history section in this video if you want to learn more you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um yeah just to let you have a little look at the artwork on this beer before we open it up there you can see um, Hoodoo Brown in all these glory. Of course, these beers are named against, uh, named after quite famous American criminals. There you can see the Amar Brucus symbol. There I do miss the fact that they had, they used to have Danish flags down here, and I did like that that they had a little bit of a kind of you know made in Denmark sort of thing on that. I like that about European craft beers showing which one of the the countries it's from. But since this beer was sold here in Sweden, they've taken away the usual story that you normally get from Amar Brucus. But Untapped will save us for the most part on this one but it's not quite um, big enough to tell us exactly everything so one thing I would say to Amar is that they need to put um, the stories of these beers on their website because as far as as far as I've seen they aren't up there so far but um, yeah so the story of Hoodoo Brown then and this is one of the things as I say stupid sea symbol laggard rules they don't let them post um, you know kind of funny stories and things on the sides of their beers and this has got Amar in the trouble, uh, into trouble in the past of course but yeah um, this one uh, the Hoodoo Brown at uh, home and G Neil better known as Hoodoo Brown hailed from a traditional southern family in Lexington Missouri as a teenager Hoodoo worked as a printer's devil on the local newspaper until one day he jumped on a freight train going west he drifted to the town of Las Vegas in New Mexico and soon ruled the place already notorious as the most lawless city in the West. By 1879, Hoodoo, described as a tall, thin man with light hair, a small moustache and a rakish look was justice of the peace and mayor of the place. He recruited the baddest of the bad and soon commanded a formidable band of outlaws who enforced law and committed crimes as they saw fit. The group became known as the Dodge City Gang from 1879 through to 1880. Uh, Hoodoo would lead his gang in stagecoach and train robberies, murder, thievery and municipal corruption. They decided which murderers, including ones they committed, which murders, uh, sorry, murders, including ones they committed, were homicide and which self-defence. Ultimately, the gang was run out of town. Hoodoo left for Houston, but was arrested and jailed upon arrival for the, val uh, for the killing of a Vegas deputy. Hoodoo hired two attorneys and was released when the Texas authorities were unable to establish charges against him. Then, mysteriously, Hoodoo Brown seems to have slipped out of recorded history. Sources indicate that Hoodoo died in Torreon, Mexico, where he left a common-law wife and son. Two of Hoodoo's brothers then brought his remains back to the family plot in Lexington. That's as far as the untapped... Um, thing goes actually because it's limited on characters of course but I think that tells you the vast majority so I'm not 100% sure if these are based on uh, 
on factual folk because yeah sometimes of course the um, Amar do like to write silly things in their beers but um, the stories are always good I always enjoy reading these um, on the, the reviews for you as well but uh, yeah that is your story of Hoodoo Brown but to tell you the makeup of the beer itself like I said to you earlier this one is a 16.8% uh, bourbon barrel aged double mash imperial stout the malt base in this one is uh, Pilsner Crystal 150 Melanoidin Chocolate and uh, roasted barley uh, and the hops in this one are simply it's simply Columbus and it uses a high gravity ale yeast so yeah that would be a specialist imperial stout yeast basically but yeah 750 um, milliliters this bottle 75 centiliter bomber I guess you could say and I think this one came in somewhere in the region of 200 Swedish kroner so that's roughly about 20 euros for this big bottle and um, which in fairness for what it is isn't bad especially when you consider that it's an import beer and you will pay a little bit more for the import beers here in Sweden because you know the import company has to get a cut it just makes sense but let's see if we can get this one open without um, having to uh, having to pause the video we'll need to see um, no this is going to need a video pause be back in just a second right guys so managed to get the wax top off let's get this guy out and into the glass. Just look at how thick the wax is on this thing. That's why I couldn't get it open. Mental. But yeah, there is your Amar Broikus bottle cap. Of course, this one is quite common to these beers, and I've got many of these. I've gathered many of those over the years. But um, yeah, let's get the Hoodoo Brown out and into the glass. Let's go for it. Curious to try this beer for sure. So. That was a bit of a fight to get this one open, actually. It's the one thing I would say to Amar Brokers with their beers, if they can make the wax just a little bit less thick, that would be uh, that would be a good thing, of course. It's a pain for folk like me doing the beer videos and things, but I guess for the kind of regular enthusiasts uh, and stuff like that, um, who are just who just want to drink the thing, then it's, it's not too much of a bother. But um, yeah, <laughs> we finally got it out and into the glass. So yeah, here we go. As you can see then, and as you would expect, this beer has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. So it looks very, very nice. You would expect this from an imperial stout, of course. The beer poured with a little bit of a kind of bumpy head, but that's faded away to be pretty much nothing. And you can see a nice kind of foamy ring just around the, uh, the edge of the glass there, which looks very, very nice. So yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the, uh, the bottom of the head there. Um, what's left of it but um, yeah it certainly looks the part of a big imperial stout I mean when it's 16.8% ABV and it's an all barley malt uh, beer then it kind of makes sense that the head isn't really sticking around too much you know wheat is usually a very good way to maintain your head um, on these beers but um, yeah one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass like I said one or two little ones going up towards um, the surface of the beer but otherwise you know not much visible carbonation in terms of its color of course a lovely dark ebony rosewood color you can see there's a nice little bit of a kind of coca-cola um, colored edge to this one which you would expect from the style of course but um, it certainly looks very very nice this one so remember the color of your beer is dependent on one the type of malts that you use two the length of your wort boil and then any adjuncts or barrel agents of course would be variables number three and four the color of the beer the magnitude of the color of the beer is usually determined by the types of malts that you use and then um, of course the longer that you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize thus you get a darker color of beer but with a big imperial stout like this especially a double mash one we're probably talking like a five maybe even six hour um, boil on this one so yeah this will be an absolute monster of a beer of course you know lots and lots of uh, sugars for the yeast to go wild on in this one but in terms of an imperial stout nothing particularly crazy about this beer in terms of its appearance it certainly looks as you would expect so um yeah let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one i'll tell you something it smells absolutely beautiful and um, i'm going to say straight away nothing surprising about this beer in terms of it of what it gives you it sounds like a, it smells like a very nice kind of um, old school imperial stout. Um, as I say, I, get, I think this is going to be one of these ones that's 
nothing surprising but it's just you know really well done this is a very very highly rated beer actually it was like 4.1 or 2 or something like that on the untapped page when i was reading the story out to you but yeah it smells absolutely lovely um so yeah the aroma of this beer is um the first thing you're going to notice about this beer, of course, is the bourbon barrel aging. You can smell that lovely big kind of smooth oak coming out of this one. I do get a little touch of a kind of leathery note out of this beer as well, which is interesting. But um, the thing I've always found with bourbon barrel aging rather than Scotch whiskey barrel aging, um, for me, Scotch whiskey is a little bit more kind of grainy and sort of almost like spicy in a sense. Whereas the American bourbons are a little bit kind of smoother and uh, more brown sugary orientated of course and you get that out of this beer immediately you can smell that big smooth brown sugary and um, bourbon character coming out of this beer um, and that is just the backbone that we're talking about with this one but um it smells like an absolutely lovely lovely beer this one i'll tell you something though um amar brucus seem to love their uh, their pilsner malt so i'm quite curious to see how that turns out in this beer of course because I, I i probably have I, I couldn't tell you offhand, but I probably have had some dark beers with a bit of Pilsner malt in them before. So yeah, the um, the aroma that comes off of this beer in that side of things from the barrel aging is just absolutely insane. It's it's lovely. Um, but yeah, on the, the kind of malty side of things then, you've got a lovely um, big chocolatey note to this beer. You get a mix of kind of high cocoa chocolate, you know, sort of 80, 90%. Uh, and you also get some kind of milky notes out of it as well, some more milky chocolate, definitely some vanilla in there. Um, and yeah, it's you get a little bit of a kind of you get a little bit of that kind of chocolate powdery quality out of it as well. If you think like Nesquik or Oh Boy, you know these kind of things, that sort of uh, chocolate powder that you use to make chocolate milk. There's definitely some of that kind of aroma um, coming out of the beer in that sense as well. Um, but a lot of brown sugar sitting on top of this one as well you know you've got that big highly caramelized treacle molasses sort of thing going on in there um, and it works it just works really really nicely in that sense so yeah big highly treacleized uh, treacle caramel molasses sort of thing going on you've got a, a slightly sweeter oily caramel in there and i do get a little bit of a more kind of toasty um i do get a little bit of a more kind of toasty um brown sugar out of this one as well there is a wee bit of that Kind of going on in this one so yeah there's a lot of stuff in this beer is very very familiar this this is one of these beers that doesn't come across as very quirky or anything like that but the aroma that you get out of it is just you know um absolutely beautiful i think it comes across very very nicely in the malty and um in the malty and bourbon barrel aged um, side of things it's got everything you'd expect and everything you would want it just smells big and thick and i mean when it's a double mash imperial stout that is um that is to be expected of course but um yeah i don't know if there's really anything else we need to say about the um about the the aroma in this one other than as i say the further you go into the the aroma with it you get a bit more leathery and nutty character out of it but yeah on the hoppy side of things you know when this is a big bourbon barley beer quite a bit of the um quite a bit of the barrel age side the, the hoppy side of things will have dropped out of the beer so you can you can notice that with this beer the hoppy side of the beer is really quite big and smooth so there's a little bit of earthiness in there you can get a little bit of kind of floral aromaticity out of it but not too much and there is a wee bit of grassiness um so yeah columbus is a hop um, i'm quite interested to see how the fruity side of this comes out in the flavor because columbus in an ipa of course is usually a bittering hop it's big and spicy and it's very distinctive in that sense so yeah i'm curious to see what it offers um, on that side of things but the green component for me a little bit of grassy zest still lingers in there which isn't surprising a wee bit of a kind of floral aromatic component and also a wee kind of touch of earthiness too so i really like um, i do really like how this um how that goes together in this one but on the um on the fruity side of things um it's it's kind of as you'd expect you get a little bit of a cakey vibe out of this beer the further you go into it you get a little bit of that kind of christmas puddingy sort of thing bit of raisin for sure nice kind of juicy plum sitting underneath and then of course you've got a bit of a fig a bit of a kind of black currant and um sort of a more oily blackberry note out of this one the fruits overall though i would say they lean a little bit towards the oily side of things they've got a bit of sharpness in there like i said and just um you know those lighter juicy elements come out a little bit later on um but yeah this one smells quite similar to other um, imperial stouts i've had from amar Barucas before but that's not a bad thing these guys know what they're doing 
when it comes to this style. So um, yeah, I think it's about time that we tasted this one then. So this one is the Hoodoo Brown, a 16.8% ABV um, bourbon barrel aged Imperial Double Mash Stout from Amar Brookhouse in Kastrup in Copenhagen. Thank you again to Matthias for making this review possible. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull, cheers. That's really interesting. Um, it's a beautiful beer. We'll say that straight away. But I've never had a beer, as far as I can remember, that has quite the impact that this one does. Um, one of the things I'm going to say about this is that it doesn't come across as overly thick, in a sense. The flavour is incredibly intense in this, and you'll notice that as soon as, um, as you take it in. But it's still... You know, it's got the mouth, it's interesting because this beer, it's got the mouth feel of, you know, like a 9-10% stout. It's got a little bit of that kind of cleanliness and slickness to it, but the, the intensity of the flavour is quite obviously of something uh, of something bigger. But we'll come back to the mouth feel later on in the in the, the video, of course, but the, the impact of this beer is, is something else. The first sip you have of that is, is quite unusual compared to, you know, I can't think of anything really to compare that to. So yeah, even after 2,900 reviews, we're still getting things that surprise us and that's what keeps us going. That is definitely what keeps us going. But yeah, that's an awesome, awesome beer. So what you'll find is it comes in, it's got a lovely big sweet impact but then the further you go into the aftertaste it does start to get a little bit drier and then the bourbon barrel flavours really come out of this and just kind of take it home if you like so yeah this is this is a really really interesting beer for sure but let's try and break down the flavour for you then and um, and and explain it clearly so straight away across the middle of the palate you can feel that lovely smooth big oaky character coming out of this one that just forms the backbone of the beer you're always going to get that with a bourbon barrel aged beer of course but then if we focus on that middle third of your palate if you go towards the back of that middle third of your palate it's interesting because you do get a little touch of spiciness out of the wood which is kind of interesting it almost feels a little bit like cherry wood in a sense um, but yes, you go into the, the front half of that middle third of your palate, the woody notes that you get, there's definitely a wee bit of a kind of nuttiness in there. A little bit of vanilla coming out, I would say, as well. And uh, I do get a touch of leatheriness out of this one. I've been noticing this. Maybe my palate's changing, of course. This is something we always have to keep in mind. But perhaps um, there is a little bit of leatheriness out of this one. And just sitting on top of all of these... Um, elements that I've mentioned to you, you've got that layer of kind of um, brown sugar, you that that bourbon whiskey kind of note just sitting on top of it. So in the very dead centre of your palate, as you move further forward, you will notice that there's a gradual kind of nuttiness and um, pushes its way um, out of the beer as well. So there's some really interesting bourbon barrel aged um, undertones to this beer. Um, I really like that. I do really like that about this one. I wouldn't say, I don't know if it's right to say that this beer isn't the most intense one, uh, sorry, isn't the most complex one that I've come across from Amar Brookhus. I don't know, but it's certainly the most intense one in terms of flavour. It's there, there's As I say, there's nothing madly surprising about this beer. It's just all about how intense the flavour is in this one. But like I say, it's just it's beautifully crafted. It's one of these beers that's just really, really well done. Mm. So, yeah, um, it is very nice. I would say, though, that the more you drink of this beer, the more your palate kind of adjusts to it and you get used to that intensity of flavour. So this beer does mellow out very nicely, in fact. But I think we've covered the kind of bourbon barrel aged element of this beer quite well. So, yeah, sitting on top of that, um, that layer of bourbon, uh, kind of bourbon... Uh, sort of brown sugar if you like, sitting on top of that. Um, that's when you get everything else coming out of the beer. You can feel the ni a nice kind of chocolatey layer sitting on top of that. So again, in the back half of that middle third of your palate, you get um, the more kind of intense, kind of darker, uh, you know, high cocoa chocolates in there. There's a little bit of a kind of more powdery chocolate, like that chocolate powder I was talking about earlier that you use to make chocolate milk and stuff. You do get a little bit of the drier chocolate there on that back half of the middle third of your palate. But as you move, 
further forward. There's almost like a dip in the flavour, if you like, and the brown sugar's kind of sit in that. But then as you go into that front half of the middle third of your palate, you'll get the more kind of milky chocolate elements um, coming out of the beer. So that's a really interesting point to make um, about this one as well, for sure. But, um, yeah, the way this beer goes about its business for sure is, um, is very, very nice. All of the flavours that you get in this are to be expected, but so it's just the sheer intensity of flavour in this one that, um, that makes this beer so good. So, um, yeah, the double mash really shines through in this one. And I guess the thing is with the bourbon barrel ageing as well, you always sacrifice a bit of the, the thickness of the beer when it comes to barrel ageing. But that just, I think that just amplifies the effect, um, come to think of it. So, yeah, maybe that's a good way to kind of describe what's going on here. But, uh, yeah, let's focus on the kind of brown sugary side of this beer then. So, sitting sitting in the kind of, um, the very dead centre of your palate, you can feel that really intense kind of treacly molasses note coming out of the beer. You can feel that just right in the dead uh, epicentre of your tongue. As you move further out from that, it does sort of, turn to be a little bit more kind of just big thick and highly caramelized and as you move towards uh, further out towards that circle at uh, the edge of that circle you get a bit more of a toasty brown sugary element there's maybe a few little um biscuity elements um coming out of this one as you go out further towards the edge of the palate um but um yeah i think it's the brown sugary notes you get with this the intensity of the brown sugar in there both from the bourbon barrel side of things and from the malt base itself is um is really interesting um pardon me i am wondering if a little bit of the dryness you're getting from the chocolate and from the barrel aging is maybe the pilsner malt playing a role because you know on the back half of that middle third of your palate that's always where you would get a little bit of the dryness of um you know the pilsner malt so pilsner malt of course will contribute a little bit to the biscuity side of the spear and i think the biscuity notes come out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste too so a wee bit of food for thought there um when it comes to the the pilsner malt in this beer so um yeah i think that describes the middle third of your palate which is by far the most complex part of them um, of this beer so yeah very layered and lots of interesting things going on but yeah let's focus on the other parts of the beer then so on the border region between middle third and back third of your palate again you get a nice you get a nice sort of cakey brownie thick build up there which i think works very very well um and then you get um, you can feel on top of that there's a bit of a roasty, toasty, grainy thing. Into the back third of your palate, though, you can feel a bit more of the kind of roasty, toasty, bread crusty you note know, just forming at the base of the beer. Um, I do get a wee bit of a kind of bready quality on that back third of your palate as well, like a sort of brown wholemeal bread. And then sitting on top of that, you get the more airy, yeasty kind of components out of the beer. So when you start at the back of your uh, palate, you can feel the flavour just kind of condenses down gradually. Then as you go into that middle third of your tongue, it goes down quite a lot and those flavours are a little bit kind of um, squashed together in a sense but it works um, very very well so as I say this one definitely not the most complex beer that I've come across from uh, from Amar Brucas before as far as memory goes but that's um, not to say that it isn't complex in itself but it's the intensity it really is the intensity of that malty and, and bourbon barley's aged backbone um, that, that, that carries this beer in a sense um, or that, that you know, sort of underpins this beer, I guess we could say. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice uh, bit of earthiness there. It's quite an, It's got a good bit of bitterness to it actually, which is interesting. But as you move further forward, it does smoothen out quite quickly. And then as you, the earthiness kind of lingers there until you push towards the kind of front third of the side of your tongues, if you, at the side of your tongue, if you like. There's a wee bit of a floral, aromatic kind of thing going on there. You can pick up a little bit of that sort of inherent spice that you get from Columbus, which is quite interesting. But then round the front curve of the palate, you've got a nice sort of um, bit of grassiness in there. And it does have just a little bit of the zestiness you would expect of Columbus as well. So the green component in this beer is quite interesting. I mean, if I was going to do this in Peru still, I probably would have used Cascade and, um, and Chinook. So it kind of shows you what I know because you're the, obviously the Columbus is capable of um, of doing a very nice job as well. But again, food for thought. That's why we do these reviews is to learn things. But um, yeah, let's focus on the front third of your tongue then and the fruitiness of the beer. So yeah, border region between front third and middle third of your palate again. A little bit of that thick kind of brownie. Uh, build up it's almost got a little bit the front part of the palate though that has a little bit of that kind of christmas puddingy vibe to it a little bit 
toasted and roasted as well but the base of that front third of your palate again it's like a kind of there's a bit of the toasty well fired kind of thing going on there it's like the kind of roasted toasty edge of a brownie it's kind of like that and then on top of that of course you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer so on the back half of that front third of your palate like i say you've got that cakiness kind of brownie quality sitting underneath but there's a sharp raisin in there you get all the juicy plums a little bit of a kind of pruny sort of thing coming out of it too there's maybe a wee bit of a slightly datey um, type element to this beer as well you do get a little bit more of a kind of dry um, dainty sultana type flavour as you kind of come further forward but then as you move into the, the front half of that front third of your tongue it becomes a little bit more sort of figgy and black curranty and then you've got a nice kind of oily blackberry type quality um, just sitting on top of that so yeah it really the, the flavour the fruity flavours in this one are very oily but I think that kind of suits um, the, the vibe of this beer overall to be honest with you I think it works um, really really quite nicely so yeah um, this is a beautiful beautiful beer as I say nothing surprising about it to be honest with you in terms of the the flavor composition when we think about this this style of beer but it's just beautifully crafted and you know these days you can't ask for uh, for much more than that it's an awesome awesome beer this one in terms of its uh, in terms of its flavor profile so big thumbs up to Amar Brookers for this one then this is up there with the top imperial stouts that I've had from these guys but do make sure you try the um the Herr Fredrickson that's their kind of cult classic beer for me at least um but yeah mouthfeel wise and this is an interesting point with this beer so definitely it's a full bodied beer i don't think there's much doubt about that um And like I say, um, you know, this is definitely not the thickest of Imperial Stouts that you're going to come across. So it is kind of in the mid-range when we're talking about the full-bodied end of the spectrum. The carbonation is extremely smooth in this one. It's got a real slickness to it. And you still get a bit of that kind of cleanliness that you expect of a Nordic beer as well. 100% you're getting that out of this one. Um, so it's got a lovely slickness and lovely cleanliness to it, which I think is um, is great. In terms of bitterness, I think this beer actually would have a fairly high IBU count to it because there's still quite a bit of earthiness to the beer. Like I say, I get a little bit, you know, there's a bit of earthiness to the hoppy side of things. You do get a bit of dryness to the kind of wood and a bit of a, a you know, a toasty black malty quality out of the beer. Um, there is definitely a little bit of that in this one. You know, the dry chocolatey elements out of it, that sort of powdery chocolate. But I would say base of the beer you do get a little bit of a, a well fired kind of roasty barley sort of thing there so into the aftertaste a wee bit more of a kind of roasty well fired bread crust which is interesting but um yeah i think this beer must be you know 70 80 ibus potentially a little bit more than that i wouldn't be surprised if it's if it's around that kind of level but remember ibus are my weakest point probably when it comes to beer reviewing um in terms of the malt base, like I say, you've got a lovely smooth barrel aged layer to this one, which is, is really, really interesting. And then the, the malt base is kind of what you'd expect. Lovely chocolatey sweetness in there. A mix of dryness, sweetness and uh, you know, booziness out of it as well. I think it works really nicely. But a big, oily, juicy, um, fruity character coming out of this one, which I think works um, extremely, extremely well. So yeah, a big, big thumbs up to uh, to Amar Brookers for this one. Um, as I say, I think with the bourbon barrel aging, it takes away a bit of the effect, the sheer thickness that you would normally get from a double mash beer, but it really kind of pumps up the flavour intensity. I think that's the lesson to learn from this beer. If you do a double mash Imperial Stout, you're going to have a very slick beer, I think, but um, an incredibly intense uh, flavor coming out of it and um, i wish i knew how long they would they had aged this one in barrels for the the last ones i think were about 12 months or 15 months or something like that so i would guess this one is probably along the same lines but yeah and um, the mouthfeel of this one is very very slick and that gives you a very kind of intense flavor out of this which is uh, an interesting point but yeah i think we can leave it at that for this review so yeah this one was the hoodoo brown um a 16.8 percent imperial uh well 16.8% um, bourbon barrel aged uh, 
double, uh, double mash imperial stout had to think about that they are probably the alcohol going to my head but this one is from amar brookers in castrop in southern copenhagen let's leave it at that for just now once again thank you for watching my beer reviews this is a bit of a longer one but until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from amar brookers thank you again to matthias for this one and i will see you guys in the next review slange it skull cheers and see you guys very very soon